Hello once again everyone and welcome back to getting more out of Ferdinand. So, joining me once again today is Eric, and today we're going to be going over, I believe we are on assault number seven or eight. eight. We're on eight, thank you. See, one of us can count. Now then, an engineer, not an engineer. Either way. Point being, we're on assault number eight. Now what's fun about this one is if you watched number seven, you may recall that one of the interpretations of it was the idea of this kind of swinging motion, where you bring your basket down and your tip comes over with some good velocity. While I don't necessarily know whether or not that's meant to be for number seven, for number eight, we are definitely going to be using that principle here. And we also get to see the return of an old friend, one of which has baffled back orders for quite a while. So, let's first talk about the scene. So, you come up against your antagonist, and what we're going to do here is I'm going to adopt an inside guard, but I'm going to let the tip droop, still inclining to the manner of an inside. So basically, we're moving into spadroon guard, otherwise known as the half circle guard. Now, you could also interpret this in a couple other ways, i.e. just letting the tip droop here, but I do find letting my knuckles be parallel uh, to the ground is what's going to give it the swoosh that I really want. Now, as for Rauworth's advice when you take this guard, you can also move your arm up to go ahead and reinforce. And let's talk briefly about some other options here. So, the half circle guard is a weird, weird thing. Um, when it comes to it, mostly what you're looking for is to play the point game. That's really what it's best at. Or alternatively, it defends against cuts from below or against the wrist because it has the property of sweeping across when you do your parry. However, another thing that you can do with it is, and it is meant to be rarely, you can use this to engage with the point from the get-go. So if I can get somebody listening to me already fighting like this, it is apt for launching most of your thrust game. Its main weakness, though, being you can beat it from the back side and it can pop out of my hand. So, even if someone knows this, this play can actually still happen. But either way. So the idea here is I go into the manner of an inside and I lower my point. For this, I'll go ahead and reinforce as though Rauworth told me to. And our antagonist will feel the need to throw to the outside of my arm, as that's the most immediate target. And it should also be noted that Ferdinand here says it will look awkward. Yes, we all agree with that, right? He will feel pretty inclined to attack, especially if you don't know what, if you don't look like you know what you're doing. So what we're going to do is as he throws, I'm going to lift my tip and then let my basket turn over. And as you see, I kind of get this swoosh into it, almost like a ribbon cut. And what's nice about this is since my knuckles are down, I essentially get to lift the flat and then just turn my tip over in the manner of a two cut, and I'll be able to blast through most of what he's looking for. Now, at the moment I'm not moving, but I want to add to this a little bit of a lunge, depending upon how deep he's going, and this will allow me to hit him in the head, in that case I stuck him in the throat, or you can also hit him in the arm. Sometimes you'll even go all the way over to the front of the throat or for the breast. Kind of depends upon what you're getting. The biggest thing with this is I want to make sure that when I throw this cut, I am throwing it as a two, not a six. I need that blade to be coming down at a 45, because with his blade coming down at a 45, if I try to throw this horizontal, it's going to be canceled out because he'll have the better line. I need to come down on top of it, which means that I will always have the better line. Now, in relation to how much inwardness I give, kind of depends. Um, depends upon length of sword, depends upon how deep he is lunging, depends upon where my feet are. Um, this is definitely one that almost feels a bit like a counter thrust at times. And if you get it as a thrust, that's just fine. No complaints here. Um, the biggest thing about it is you are going to then be relatively stuck for a second. And what I mean by stuck is I don't mean it in a bad way. I just mean that once I'm in here, right, and I hit him or what have you, it is in my best interest to keep my basket there, meaning that my next series of movement is going to need to be to this side, and I may not be able to do that immediately. So bear that in mind. Now. Rawworth doesn't describe any further action, just they cut the outside of your arm, not Rawworth, then, for now. They throw out the outside of arm, we end up cutting them on the outside of their arm or head, job to good. So we'll show that one more time from this side, and then we'll show it on the other side. Okay, we'll show it, let's do three times on this side. Now, as you see, because my tip has to take a second before it can go in, it is important that I push forward with the tip, because if I don't, my basket is going to meet this, 
and it will default over to this side. And I might get lucky and be pushed into a St. George, or I might get unlucky and he sticks me in the face. So make sure you're leading with your tip and continuing to guide the tip forward. Also, just another little aside, if you're going to use this one, bear in mind the shape of your basket. If I'm going to use this strategy, I prefer a basket that doesn't have too much going on in the front. You know, Eric's is also relatively small, but you've seen my other one with its bigger uh, front guard. I find that that can get in the way or things can get stuck when they don't want to. So bear that in mind. Of course, anything can be solved with a little bit of practice, but I always find that is a factor. Either way, though, thank you very much, Eric. And thank you all very much for watching. We're going to take a little break because Eric is actually going to go on vacation. Um, but we will return soon and continue off with the final assaults of Ferdinand's broadsword. And they're all quite a bit of fun. So thank you very, very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.